Today, we are going to take a look on how to add a rich text editor to a Next.js application. This video is perfect for you if you are trying to add rich text editing features to your Next.js application. So in this video, we will see how to set up a rich text editor from scratch, how to add extensions to it that enable us to use things like bolds, italic headings, underlines, numbered and unordered lists, just to mention a few. And this setup will set the stage for us so that if we want to add any other features to our editor later on, like mentions, for example, it will be easy after we have this basic setup done. And real quick, before we start, I just published a free email course, Rich Text Editor Blueprint, that goes more in depth about Rich Text Editors, how to choose the correct one, and how to configure and maintain your editor without headaches. So if that's something that interests you, go sign up. But now let's dive into the video. So in this video, we will build this kind of rich text editor, and this will work as a basis for any other editors. So in this one, we only have the basic editing functions. So headings, bold, italic, underlined, then unordered and numbered lists. But you can easily extend this with other extensions if you want. But I think it's the most important thing is to understand the basics of rich text editing how you set up the editor and then how you get the content out of it in order for you to save it. So this is what we will build in this video. And for the editor, we are going to use TipTap, which is a headless rich text editor. It's highly customizable. You can build pretty much anything with it. And as you can see, they have pretty big uh, references using the TipTap editor down here. So yeah, this is what we will use for this example. So let's start by actually opening up VS Code and a fresh Next.js project. Okay, so here I have a fresh Next.js project open and I haven't touched anything yet. So there's nothing I have done for this other than just created it. So let's start by cleaning this up a little bit. So I'm going to open up the page file and I'm going to remove everything from the return statement. And then just say editor over here for now like this and then I will open up the globals.css file so I'm going to remove some styles from here so what I do is just remove this media query so we get the uh, white editor right away we don't want any theming right now and I initialize this project with Tailwind CSS and TypeScript so we have the Tailwind CSS classes ready here and we will use those to style our editor uh, later on so I'm going to save this and now let's fire up our dev server just to see that everything works like this and let's see the browser. Okay, so we get the editor text. So it looks like everything is working so far. So now let's add the editor to our page. And what I'm going to do is switch back to the VS code and then install the tip tap editor. So I'm going to type in yarn add and what we want is the tip tap react, tip tap PM and tip tap starter kit and more of these in just a minute. So I'm going to install those. Okay, so now that those are installed, I'm going to start the dev server again. And then let's edit our page. So we want the editor component over here. And what I'm actually going to do is create an own component for it. So I'm going to click new file and call it RTE editor.tsx like this. And now let me type in some code over here and let's go through it together then. Okay. So what we first need is editor content and use editor from the tip tap react package. And uh, of course, this is a client component. And then we have the actual tip tap component over here. And first we initialize the editor with the use editor. So first we give it the extensions property. And this is a way for us to add different features for our editor. And right now we are using this starter kit, which we import from the TipTap starter kit. And this is great because TipTap offers this starter kit uh, for us to use as extension. And it includes all the uh, basic default extensions like bold and italic and lists and so forth. Then we define the content for the editor. So if we want to add some default content for it, and then we can add in these editor props with attributes and class. And this way we can add some styling for our editor. So for now, I added a few Tailwind CSS classes for our editor to make it look a little bit nicer. Then in the return statement, I have a couple of divs with some styling in them using Tailwind CSS. 
And here is the important part. So we are rendering the editor content from TipTap and passing in as a editor prop, the editor we just created over here. And then uh, we can add also some classes, class names for styling for the editor. So I think this is all we need for now. So let's save this and now go back to the page.tsx and import that component like this. And then let's render it like so. And it looks like I have a typo there. So let's go like that. Okay, now let's save it and switch back to the browser. And it looks like our editor is displayed over here. So we have a little bit of borders and then our content in it. And we can write stuff inside of it. But let's see this error or warning in our dev tools or console. It says the SSR has been detected. So server side rendering. And we need to tell the immediately render explicitly, explicitly to be false. So let's add that so we don't get that warning. So let's go back to VS Code and to our editor. And to fix that, we just need to add a property here, immediately render and set it to false like this. So save it, check the browser, refresh the page and the warning is gone, which is good. Okay, so we added the starter kit extension. And as I said, it should have the bolts and headings and lists in it. So let's try it out. So let me try to bold this text using uh, keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to hit command B. Looks like it bolts it. How about italic? Looks like it's working. Okay, let's test out then, for example, headings. So headings should be added with just one hashtag is level one two is level two and so on. So let's try to add a level one heading. Okay, it looks like it's not working. How about list? So they should be added with just a dash and space and then like this and so on. Looks like that's not working either. So the reason these aren't working, so if we inspect this one, we can see that we have the h1 for the heading and then we have unordered list for the list as they should be. But the reason they are showing as a normal text in our editor is because we are using Tailwind CSS. So if we check out the styles file again, we are importing this Tailwind base in our uh, style file. And what that does is it resets some styles for our application. So there is a clean slate that we can start from. So that also resets the default styling for our lists and headings, for example. So in order to fix this, let's just add some styles for our headings and lists. Okay, so I just added some uh, styles for from H1 to H6, as you can see, and then styles for unordered lists and ordered lists. So now let's save this and check out our app. Okay, now it's looking much better. So now we have the list displayed there and the heading the correct way. And now if we add second level heading, it is the level two heading. So that's great. But so far we have needed to add these uh, styles with keyboard shortcuts or just knowing that, for example, two hashtags is uh, level three heading. So let's add a toolbar over here that we can also use to style our content. Before we continue, I just want to say thank you for this week's sponsor, Elgato. One of my most used accessories is Elgato's Wave XLR audio interface together with Elgato WaveLink software, which I use for controlling my microphone audio. I'm sitting in meetings for the better part of my work days, so having a good control over your audio is super important. So I was super happy when Elgato released a new major version of the Wavelink software earlier this month. The Wavelink 2.0 introduced a bunch of great features and after using it for a few weeks now, here's my top three favorite ones so far. First one is the voice focus. So using AI voice focus gives your microphone studio great quality just by toggling one setting on. And I tested this out with my colleague and the difference between the voice focus being on and off was like a night and day. So let's try it out. So right now I have the voice focus on and I'm going to toggle it off now. So this is what my voice sounds like now without the voice focus. And now it's back on. 
So as you can see, it's a big difference. The second one is the sound check feature. So do you know what is the most asked question in meetings? Well, of course, it's the can you hear me? With the sound check feature, you can make a short recording and play it back so you can hear how your microphone sounds and you no longer need to ask, can you hear me? And the third one is the one-click audio routing and app grouping. So sometimes in a meeting you want to share a video or just play some music for others to hear. With the Wavelink 2.0, you can now route sounds from any of your programs straight to your meeting. I've actually had a lot of fun with this one in a couple of my meetings. So what I did was that when we were wrapping things up, I put some Star Wars music on from Spotify and then routed it to the meeting while I was closing things out, giving the meeting kind of this movie end credits vibe. This always got a good laugh out of everyone. But yeah, those are just few of the new features of the Wavelink 2.0. So go to elgato.com to check out more. And thank you again, Elgato, for sponsoring this video. So let's go back to the VS Code. And I'm going to open up my editor. And I'm going to use some icons from the React icons for our toolbar. So I'm going to add that as a dependency like this. And then we also want to add the underline for our editor. And that is something that's not included in the starter kit over here. So I'm going to just install it uh, here also like this. So let's install those. And now let's modify our code to include those two. So I'm going to import the underline and the icons uh, up here like this. So I added these lines over here. Then uh, we will also need the use state hook from React. So I'm going to import that too like this. And then let's scroll down and actually go to the return statement. And I'm going to add some code over here and then let's go through it together. Okay, so this is the part I just added for our component. And this code is for the toolbar up top. So let's go through it together. So first we have a button for the heading. So setting the heading and we are using the heading icon over here. And then we have a select where we can select which level of heading we want to apply. And as you can see, we are getting some errors over here. And that's because we have not yet defined these ones. So let's do that right now. So what we need to do is add the state up here like this. So we are just storing the selected header level to the state. So now let's go back down here. And then in the on change handler, we are actually logging something. We don't have to do that, but we are getting the level number from the uh, select. So what was selected, then we are setting the header level to the state and applying that header level to the selected row or text. And how we can do that is by calling the editor, then chain, then focusing it, and then calling the toggle heading with the uh, level information. And lastly, adding the run function over here. So this is how we can programmatically add styles to our text inside of our editor. All right, so let's go a little bit more down. Okay, so next we have button for bolding the text. And as you can see, it is a little bit more simpler. So we are we just have the on click handler. And again, we are calling this editor chain focus. And then what we want to do for the selected text, and it is to toggle bold. And we are using the bold icon. And then same thing for the italics and underlining over here, and then bulleted list and unordered list. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same for all the styles. So that's the HTML that we added, but there's still a couple of things we need to do. So right now we imported the underline extension and we used it in the button, but we still need to add it to the editor. So how we can do that is just by passing it in here in the array. So like this. So now we have the underline extension also in there. So let's save this and see if it works. So I'm going to fire up my dev server again and go back to the browser and refresh the page. All right. Looks like so far everything is good. So now we have all these buttons up here. So let's try to bold this hello text. Looks like it's working. Italic works and underline works also. Then if we want to add a heading, like this, we can click the heading and we get this drop down of what level we want to add. So let's say we want level two. 
and let's inspect it. And it looks like it's the heading two. So it looks like it's working. And then we have the lists and the numbered list. Looks like everything's working. So now we have a toolbar for our editor. So, so far we have added all the controls to edit our text, but how about how can we get the text out of the editor when we, for example, want to save it to a database? So let's add a save button down here and just for now console log the result so we can demonstrate that we can get the content out of the editor and then we could save it somewhere. So let's jump back into the VS code and I'm going to add the button first. So I'm going to go down here. So let's add it below the editor like this. So it's a normal button, some styles for it. And then on click handler is called save content. So let's add that. Let's add it over here like this. So inside the editor, we first need to check that editor is defined. And if it is, we can call this getJSON function for the editor, which returns the contents as JSON. So there is this getJSON, but there is also getHTML. As you can see, this gets the content as HTML. But for now, let's try to get JSON. Like this. So let's save it and test it out. So now we have the save button and as we can see we have all kinds of formatting over here so i'm gonna click to save now and we can see that we get something logged into the console let me make this a bit bigger over here so let's see what it has so it has the type which is the document and then the content as property and we get all these other properties inside of it and we can see that it has their own type and then some attributes and other content. So for example, the first one, let's see what it has. So we can see that it has two texts. Uh, here is the text, actual text, hello, and then the world. And then we have this marks over here, which defines that uh, what kind of formatting the text has. So this one has all these three, as we can see, hello is bolded, underlined, and italic, and then the world text has no styling. Then if we go down a little bit more, we can see we have a heading, it has attributes of level, it's level two heading, and so on. So this way you can get the whole content of the editor as JSON, so you can easily save it to a database and then load it from there and display later on. And you can see this is quite complicated, this structure, and I don't think you have to like remember how this formatting in the JSON works because Basically, you don't have to worry about that because the editor handles all of that. And you might think also that wouldn't it be easier to just use HTML? So because that's easier to understand. But the thing is that if you are saving rich text content, it's always good to separate the presentation layer and the data layer. And what I mean by that is that, for example, here we have the data, which is the hello, and it has no, no formatting in it and the formatting is separated. So the presentation is separated with these marks over here. And over here, we are defining the styles. So we have the uh, data and then we have the style separated. And that's the better way to store the data. Then with HTML, you have the data. And for example, if this was in HTML, uh, there would be this text, hello, and there would be those HTML tags, uh, strong and underline tags, uh, wrapping this text hello. So there you don't have the presentation and data separated. But yeah, that's something to keep in mind. And I always like to say my rich text content as JSON rather than HTML. As we can see, TipTop is highly configurable, thus it can be a bit overwhelming to set up. Even though TipTap is a great editor, it is not the best choice for every situation. This is something I am talking more about in my free email course, Rich Text Editor Blueprint. In the course, I go more in depth what to look for in Rich Text Editors, how to choose one, how to configure and maintain an editor successfully. It is completely free, so go ahead and sign up to it. The link is in the description. And if you want more videos like this one, maybe even more deep dives on rich text editors and how to implement different features to them, leave a comment down below so I know that uh, these kind of videos are helpful to you. 
because the last thing I want to do is make videos about things that aren't interesting and helpful for you guys.